Welcome, travelers, to Adventures in Security. In this video, we explore various types of injection attacks. The video is in two parts. In the first, I describe each type of injection and how to manage its associated risk. In the second half, I provide simple code examples showing how the injection attacks are implemented. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. Injection attacks are a prevalent and dangerous category of security vulnerabilities that pose significant threats to data integrity, confidentiality, and availability in modern applications. These attacks occur when untrusted data is sent to an interpreter as part of a command or query, allowing attackers to inject malicious code or commands that can manipulate the application's behavior. Common injection attacks include SQL injection, no SQL injection, OS command injection, and LDAP injection. Each attack type exploits different systems and technologies, but they all share the same underlying principle, the failure to validate and sanitize user input properly. The consequences of successful injection attacks can be severe, ranging from unauthorized access to sensitive information and data corruption to complete system compromise. In many instances in which a user or process provides input to script or application database processing, there is usually a chance for an injection attack, including SQL injection, no SQL injection, OS command injection, LDAP injection, XML injection. In the case of SQL injection, one of the most common injection flaws, an attacker might manipulate input fields such as login forms or search queries to insert malicious SQL statements. The database may execute these statements if the application does not sanitize this input, meaning it fails to differentiate between code and data, possibly resulting in unauthorized viewing of data, corrupting or deleting data, or even a complete takeover of the database server. Mitigating SQL injection attacks requires a combination of secure coding practices, input validation, and proper database management. One of the most effective ways to prevent SQL injection is to use parameterized queries and prepared statements. A Java example is shown here. These techniques ensure user input is treated as data rather than executable code, preventing attackers from injecting malicious SQL commands. Input validation is another crucial measure, where all user inputs are validated against expected formats and sanitized to remove any potentially harmful characters. Additionally, employing stored procedures can help mitigate SQL injection by encapsulating SQL statements within the database, reducing the risk of direct manipulation by attackers. Additional mitigation steps include implementing least privilege access controls that ensure that database accounts have only the necessary permissions, limiting the potential impact of a successful injection attack regularly updating and patching database management systems and application software that is essential to protect against known vulnerabilities. Error handling should be carefully managed to avoid revealing sensitive information that could aid attackers in crafting more effective injection attacks. Regular security testing, including code reviews and penetration testing, helps identify and remediate vulnerabilities before attackers can exploit them. No SQL injection attacks are a type of security threat that occurs when an attacker can manipulate queries to a NoSQL database by injecting malicious input. NoSQL databases, such as MongoDB, Couchbase, and Cassandra, are often targeted due to their flexible query languages and lack of strict schema enforcement. NoSQL injection attacks exploit the way NoSQL databases handle user input. Unlike traditional SQL databases, NoSQL databases often use JSON-like query languages, which can be more susceptible to injection attacks if input validation and sanitization are not correctly implemented. Attackers can inject malicious code into queries to manipulate the database's behavior. There are two common types of NoSQL injection attacks. Command injection. An attacker inputs a command interpreted as code by the NoSQL database, allowing them to execute arbitrary commands on the server. Object injection. An attacker inputs a serialized object, which is deserialized by the application and executed on the server, allowing them to gain access to sensitive data or execute arbitrary code. 
A serialized object is an object that has been converted into a format that can be easily stored or transmitted and later reconstructed. Serialization is the process of converting an object's state, including data, into a byte stream, which can then be saved to a file, sent over a network, or stored in a database. The byte stream represents the object's state, which can later be deserialized to create a new copy of the object. NoSQL risk management includes emphasize the importance of validating and sanitizing all user inputs, which involves checking for unexpected characters or patterns that could indicate an injection attempt. For example, in MongoDB, you can use libraries like MongoSanitize to remove any keys that start with dollar sign or contain a period. Teach developers to use parameterized queries or prepared statements, which separate the query logic from the data ensuring that user inputs are treated as data and not executable code. For instance, using the dollarware operator in MongoDB can be dangerous if not handled properly. Instead, use safe query operators like $EQ, $GT, $LT, etc. Ensure the implementation of the principle of least privilege, granting the minimum necessary permissions to users and applications. For example, if an application only needs read access to a database, it should not be granted write or administrative privileges. Conduct regular security audits and penetration testing to identify and address vulnerabilities, which helps in discovering potential injection points and fixing them before they can be exploited. Advise using security libraries and frameworks that provide built-in protection against injection attacks. For example, the Mongoose library from MongoDB includes features that help prevent injection attacks. Implement robust monitoring and logging mechanisms to detect and respond to suspicious activities, including setting up alerts for unusual query patterns or access attempts. OS command injection, also known as shell injection, is a type of security vulnerability that allows an attacker to execute arbitrary operating system commands on the application server. Again, this attack occurs when an application constructs a system command using user input without properly sanitizing or validating that input. To mitigate OS command injection attacks, developers should avoid using functions that execute system commands with user input. Instead, they should use safer alternatives, such as built-in libraries or APIs that do not require constructing command strings. If executing system commands is necessary, input should be carefully validated and sanitized to remove potentially harmful characters. Using parameterized commands or escaping special characters can also help prevent injection attacks. LDAP injection is a type of security vulnerability that occurs when an attacker can manipulate Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, LDAP. Queries by injecting malicious input, leading to unauthorized access, data exfiltration, and other security breaches. LDAP injection exploits how LDAP queries are constructed, allowing attackers to alter the intended query logic and retrieve or manipulate sensitive information stored in directory services. LDAP injection attacks occur when an application constructs LDAP queries using unsanitized user input. If the input is not properly validated or sanitized, an attacker can inject special characters or additional query components to alter the behavior of the LDAP query, resulting in unauthorized access to directory information, bypassing authentication mechanisms, or escalating privileges. LDAP injection risk management considerations are the same as those for basic injection management, such as those described for SQL injection. XML injection is an attack targeting applications that process XML data. XML injection exploits how XML parsers handle user input, allowing attackers to manipulate the structure and content of XML documents. XML injection attacks occur when an application constructs XML documents using unsanitized user input. If the input is not properly validated or sanitized, an attacker can inject special characters or additional XML elements to alter the behavior of the XML parser, possibly resulting in unauthorized access to data, bypassing authentication mechanisms, or executing arbitrary code. Mitigating XML injection attacks 
requires a comprehensive approach that includes input validation, proper configuration of XML parsers, and regular security practices. One of the primary strategies is to implement strict input validation and sanitization. Using approved allow lists of input is another effective method. By defining a set of allowed characters or patterns, developers can ensure that only valid input is processed reducing the risk of malicious input being accepted by the application. Avoid trying to look for potentially dangerous input, which becomes an inefficient, riskier whack-a-mole exercise. Disabling external entity expansion prevents XML external entity, XXE, attacks. XXE attacks exploit the ability of XML parsers to include external entities, which can lead to data exfiltration or denial of service. Developers can mitigate this risk by configuring XML parsers to disable external entity processing. Proper configuration of XML parsers is essential, including setting secure defaults and ensuring that the parser does not process potentially dangerous constructs. For example, disabling DTDs, document type definitions, and external entities can prevent many types of XML injection attacks. As with other kinds of injection attacks, regular security audits and testing are vital in identifying and addressing vulnerabilities. Conducting code reviews, penetration testing, and static analysis can help uncover potential weaknesses in the application. By regularly updating and patching XML processing libraries and frameworks, developers can protect against known vulnerabilities. Using less complex data formats like JSON can reduce the risk of XML injection attacks. JSON is less prone to injection attacks due to its more straightforward structure and lack of support for external entities. Employing output encoding is another crucial strategy. By encoding user input before incorporating it into XML documents, developers can neutralize any input that might be interpreted as XML elements, ensuring that user input is treated as data rather than executable code. Now, let's assess simple examples showing how these attacks work. An example of a CQL injection input string entered into a user input field is shown here. In this example, the where conditions will always be true for any username provided. Next, a MongoDB injection example. An application uses user input to construct a MongoDB query without proper input sanitization. Vulnerable code. Attacker's input. Resulting query. This query returns all users, potentially exposing sensitive information. In our OS command example, consider a web application that allows users to check the status of a Linux-based web server by entering an IP address. The application constructs a command to ping the provided IP address and returns the result to the user. The vulnerable code might look like this. In this example, the ping server function inputs an IP address and constructs a command string that includes the user provided IP address. The os.system function then executes this command on the server. If the application does not correctly sanitize the input, an attacker can inject additional commands by providing a malicious IP address. An attacker might enter the following input. The resulting command executed by the server would be. In this case, the ping command runs as expected, but the semicolon allows the attacker to inject a second command, rm-rf slash, which deletes the entire web server drive. Consider a web application that uses LDAP to authenticate users. For our LDAP injection example, the application takes a username and password from a login form and constructs an LDAP query to verify the user's credentials. The vulnerable code might look like this. In this example, the LDAP query string is constructed using user-provided input for the username and password fields. If the input is not sanitized correctly, an attacker can inject additional LDAP query components to manipulate the query. An attacker might enter the following input in the username field. This query always returns true because this component matches any user, bypassing authentication and granting the attacker access to the system. 
Consider a web application that uses XML to store user information. The application takes user input from a form and constructs an XML document to store the data. The vulnerable code might look like this. In this example, the XML data string is constructed using user-provided input for the username and password fields. If the input is not correctly sanitized, an attacker can inject additional XML elements to manipulate the XML document. An attacker might enter the following input in the username field. The resulting XML document becomes. This XML document now includes an additional role element, which could be used to escalate privileges or gain unauthorized access to the system. That's it for this video. Again, if you liked what you saw, if you learned anything, please click the thumbs up. And until next time, be careful what you click.